Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be doing some French Country Farmhouse Thrift Flips. You can find a full product list in the description of this video and all your crafting needs on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Our first project is this lovely wooden shelf that I found for $10 at the thrift store. It was absolutely beautiful. It had so much potential. My first step is to give it a really good clean and then I am going to be using the frames mold. I've already pre-cast one of the elements in resin and I thought it would look great in the center there to cover up that star. There's nothing wrong with the star, it's just not the style I'm going for. So I'm going to be attaching the mold using Gorilla's Super Glue Gel. I decided to use a resin casting instead of clay as resin is rigid, it will hold its shape and clay usually needs more support behind it and obviously there is a gap where the star is so it just made sense to use the resin mold in this case. Now as I'm gluing it down I can see I've got a few little gaps. We're going to fix that. I'm going to actually come in now with the air dry clay and I'm going to work it into the gaps and make sure that I've got a nice clean edge there and then we'll let it dry before we move on to the next step. Next, I'm going to be using Dixie Belle's Tide Pool Silk Mineral Paint. This paint has a built-in stain blocker and it also has a built-in top coat. So it's definitely my go-to for these more simple, straightforward projects. So I'm going to end up giving it two coats, but you can already see on the first coat that this paint has amazing coverage. I definitely recommend that you use a synthetic brush with mineral paints as you are less likely to get brush strokes. When you're using silk paint, it's a good idea to let it dry for about one to two hours so that it has enough time for the paint to dry properly. With silk mineral paint, it does dry from the top down. So even though it might feel like it's completely dry, underneath it might not be completely dry and you don't wanna come in and start accidentally pulling your paint back. So definitely give it enough time to dry. As I'm painting this, I'm already really loving how that frame mold in the center looks. I think it's really just transformed this piece. It's taken it from something a bit dated into something a bit more shabby chic French country. So it's been about an hour and I'm coming in now with my second coat and you can see that it's really just filling in any of the areas where maybe I was a little bit lighter and you definitely need to do the two coats so that the uh, stain blocker and also the top coat can do its job. Even though this piece is going to be hung on a wall, I also decided to tidy up the back and give it a couple of coats of paint. We are going for a vintage feel here. So next I'm coming in with a medium grit sandpaper and I am lightly distressing the edges of this little shelf. I'm then going to be using Dixie Belle's Grunge Glaze to give this even more of a vintage feel. Silk Mineral Paint already has the built-in top coat, so I'm able to come in with the glaze now and I can wipe back as much or as little as I want. I can also use a mister to help soften the look of this and to water down the glaze a little bit. And you can see I'm applying it in small sections and then I'm using a paper towel to wipe back the excess. If you don't get back quite enough, you can always come in with a wet wipe instead. This glaze does appear blue in the container, but as you can see, as it starts to dry, it definitely goes into a lovely antique brown tone. And I've let it sit in the details of my frames casting in the center there, as it will highlight the details. You could always use a dark wax or perhaps a paint wash for this step, or if this look isn't for you, you could just leave this part out. And here's our finished French country shelf. I know whites and creams are usually my go-to, but it was so fun to use some color today on this project. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. Our next project is this little wooden tray that I picked up for $2. 
after cleaning the tray, I'm using two coats of Dixie Belle's Sunkissed Silk Mineral Paint. This is a lovely cream that has quite a lot of yellow tone in it. It's going to take two coats to get the full coverage on this. And one of the other reasons that I used the silk is that I don't know what kinds of oils and things have been used on this tray. So I would rather have the built-in stain blocker to stop any stains coming up through my paint. I'm also going to give the bottom of this tray several coats as well. Next, I'm going to be using IOD's La Campagne stamp. This has so many beautiful French country designs, but we're going to use the larger seated cow. So I'm using the IOD black permanent ink on my ink pad. I've just lightly inked it up. I've kept it on the backing for this part, and then I'm going to very carefully position it in the center and press down. You always want to have one hand holding the stamp in place while you use the other hand to make sure you have good contact. The lovely texture of the tray gave this a beautiful vintage feel. Now I'm going to be using an element from the Queen Bee stamp. We just want some text from that stamp. So I've taken the design that I want, I'm inking it up, but then I'm going to be using a wet wipe to carefully wipe away the parts of the stamp that I don't want. I just want the text. So I'm just using a wet wipe to wipe off the excess. You could also use some masking tape to tape off the areas that you don't want to use as well. Now that I only have ink on the text that I want to stamp, I'm ready to go. So just like before, I'm going to carefully position it where I want it to go and then press down. Next, I'm going to lightly distress the edges of the tray again to add to that vintage feel. And then I will seal just the ink because remember the silk has a built-in top coat. I'll seal the ink with some easy peasy spray wax. And here's our finished tray. I love how this tray turned out. Those stamps are absolutely beautiful to work with. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments. Our final project today is this wooden caddy that I picked up for a couple of dollars. And I know I've done a few of these, but there you are, one of my favorite things to do. My first step after cleaning is to remove the hardware on the side so we can take the handle off. Then I'm going to be using IOD's Village Market Mold and I want to have the cow on one side to cover the engraving that's on the caddy and the sheep on the other. So to prepare my molds, I'm going to use some cornstarch and I'm going to be working Jovi Air Dry Clay into my mold. So I start by pressing the clay into the mold and using my thumb to run along the micro rim so that I get a nice clean edge. And then when I've got enough clay in there, I will flip it over and then very carefully bend the mold so that my casting is able to come out with the help of gravity. I'm then going to cover the back with a strong wood glue and attach it to my caddy. Now I haven't positioned the cow in the center because we're going to be doing something on the side there a bit later. Next, I'm going to be casting the little sheep. So I'm dusting the mold with cornstarch. And again, I'm going to repeat the same step, working my clay into the mold and then using my thumb to get a nice clean edge by running it along the micro rim. So I have to be careful here as I'm gluing the sheep on. I don't wanna lay my caddy down on its back because I have the cow mold. So I've got it on an angle. I'm pressing down my sheep mold and then tidying up any glue. And again, we've left that gap on the side for our step a bit later. Next, I'm going to be doing a coat of Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint over the entire caddy. And I do have to use a smaller brush to be able to get into the smaller compartments there. And my molds are not completely dry, but I like to get at least one coat onto them 
uh, before letting it dry as I find I tend to get less cracking. Now I did end up getting a little bit of cracking this time around and there was a little bit of shrinking but again I'm going for a rustic look so I wasn't too worried about that. If you are going to be painting your castings before they're completely dry, just remember to be really gentle so that you don't accidentally damage the details. It's going to take two coats to get complete coverage on this and then once it's dry I will be moving on to adding a grain sack stripe stencil from Jamie Ray Vintage. I'm going to be using Dixie Bell's Cactus Silk Mineral Paint. It's a beautiful green so I'm going to dab off the excess paint onto a paper towel and with the grain sack stripe stencils I find it best to carefully run the brush along the stripe as opposed to dabbing or swirling. I'm going to do one on that side and I'm going to do another stripe on the other side as well. Once I've done my stripes, I'm going to take the same green and I'm going to actually use it on the top edges of my caddy. And then I am also actually going to be using it on the handle as well. I'm going to be doing a bit of distressing as you can see here because we are going for a French country farmhouse look. So the distressing will add to that vintage feel. So just like with the top part of the caddy, I'm not being careful to get full coverage here because we are going to be doing a bit of distressing anyway. Next, I'm going to seal the entire caddy using Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat. I'm then going to be using a few elements from IOD's Antiquities stamp. I'm going to be using one of the round designs as it sort of reminds me of an official seal and I thought it would go really nicely over the top of our grain sack stripe. I'm using the IOD black ink again and I'm inking up the stamp and then positioning it where I want it to go over the top of the grain sack stripe and then carefully pressing down. I'll be repeating the same steps on the other side with the cow and adding the same stamp on the grain sack stripe. I wanted to add something to the top, so we're actually going to use the banner that's above the pig from the antiquity stamp. So I'm inking up just the top part of it, and then I'm going to use some masking tape just to block off the other areas uh, in case I got a lot of ink down there. So you can also wipe it off as well. I'm just trying out different methods to see which works best. So once I've got the area that I want organized, I'm going to carefully position it over the top of the sheep and then press down. I'll be repeating the same step for the side that has the cow as well. I'm then going to be using one of my favorite stamp sets, the Vintage Textures stamp, and we're going to be using the Distressed stamp. So again, I'm inking it up with IOD's Permanent Black Ink. I'm then going to lightly press it against the surface. And again, I'm just going to press down in random areas. I don't want the whole stamp. I just want hints of the distressed look on my caddy. The 
Vintage Textures stamp has so many fun designs in it. I often like to use the crackle stamp or the chippy paint stamp. For this one, I just thought that the distressed design worked best. And again, if this look isn't for you, you would just leave this step out. I thought it would look a little bit odd just to have the distressed design on the outside. So I am bending and manipulating the stamp to go on the inside as well. I'm then going to take some medium grit sandpaper and distress the edges of the caddy. I also decided to take a wet wipe and to lightly wipe back some of the IOD ink just to fade the look a little bit. And because I have applied it over the top of gloss clear coat, I do have the freedom to do this for a little while after I've actually applied the stamps. Finally, I'm going to reattach the handle. And here's our finished French Country Farmhouse Caddy. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think that the beautiful cow and sheep molds look beautiful on here and they go really nicely with the Jamie Ray Vintage stencil and the IOD stamps. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I hope that you enjoyed today's video and that it's inspired you to maybe incorporate a bit of color into your decor or to give IOD's molds and stamps a try. Let me know, do you have a favorite from today's video? If you liked today's projects, please give this video a thumbs up, comment and share it out to a friend. And if you're not already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used in today's video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.